Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Take a look at my new electric motorcycle. So yeah, this is my Super Soko TC. Out of the box, it's limited to about 50 kilometers an hour. And from my testing, it has a range anywhere from about 36 kilometers to about 50 kilometers if you're very, very careful. It's very fun, but its range and a few other features it has limits its practicality, I suppose. And to that end, I am planning some upgrades for it. That's my two and a half thousand watt ground mount solar array. Uh, currently that just charges my house and runs lights, fridge, computer, games consoles, TVs, all that sort of stuff. But this thing has a great deal more potential um, for things like charging electric vehicles. The problem with this one is it's got a very small battery, less than two kilowatts, I think it's about 1.8 kilowatts. And it has a very slow charger as well, which is only four and a half amps. Uh, six hours if you're lucky to charge this battery up, which means that charging on the go, not an option. The 50 kilometers of range it has is the max you're ever gonna go on it in a day without having to stop and recharge for six hours. So my plan for this bike is I wanna keep it on the outside as stock as possible, but I wanna upgrade the batteries to at least double the capacity. I'm gonna go with lithium iron phosphate rather than lithium ion because it's the uh, chemistry that I'm most familiar with. It's the safest, it's the stuff that runs my house. Um, it has a longer lifespan. It's a little less energy dense, but in the long term, uh, it's a better bet. Another downside of this bike, as far as I can see, this hub motor here does not have regen. Whenever you let off the throttle here, there's no resistance, it just freewheels, which I think is gonna lead to premature brake wear. What I want to buy is a new motor that can do uh, regen, a new controller that can handle the regen capability, a new battery bank, and also a high-speed charger. So effectively, everything but the frame, panels, brakes, seat, and the lights are getting completely stripped and changed. I might keep the tires if they fit the new motor. Well, it's uh, probably about two and a half months since I recorded that last video. So let me show you what I got. Okay, let's run through everything that we bought. Um, this is a 24 amp, 72 volt uh, charger. Here we have our Dali BMSs, there's two of them. Each one of them is rated for 80 amps at 72 volts or probably closer to 80 volts. Uh, both of them have Bluetooth dongles so I can monitor state of charge and battery errors and stuff from a phone, which is handy. Um, went with the 150 amp Sabaton. So there you can see the red and the black are the battery cables. The yellow, the blue and the green are the motor connections because it runs on three phase AC. Uh, along with that, I also ordered a DC to DC converter for stepping down to 12 volts for the bike's lights and things. These are all of our lithium iron phosphate cells. I bought them from Lito Cala on AliExpress. They were also nice enough to supply bus bars. This is the QS motor, five kilowatt uh, hub motor that I bought. Um, it came in pretty heavy packaging as it is itself quite heavy. This is it, um, 11 kilowatts peak, five kilowatts continuous. As you can see, you got your three, lead, your three phases for your AC power. Okay, so there's a couple of other things I bought that I need to mention. Um, there is a circuit breaker on the bike currently for disconnecting the battery, but unfortunately it is not rated for 72 volts, it's only for 60 volts. And it's also the, the trip current is way, way lower than I need it to be. So I got this, which is actually a solar DC breaker. It's a 200 amp, 12 to 125 volt DC circuit breaker. Um, so that is gonna be what is going to be providing the redundant overcurrent protection for the bike. Um, while both of the BMSs will also provide their own. So the BMSs theoretically should trip at 160 amps and this should trip at 200. Since I'm running two batteries in parallel, I need to have a master bus bar, positive and negative, so that I can connect the both of the batteries up to the rest of the systems. For connecting the batteries and the charger to the bike itself, I bought these. These are QS8 connectors. They are basically a much, much chunkier version of an XT60 or XT90 connector. These apparently also have an anti-spark capability, so you could theoretically connect these while the circuit breaker is on. Plan would be to solder this heavy welding cable to the, each of these connectors on either end. I have three sets of these connectors, so my plan would be to run both of the batteries using these connectors and connect them to the main bus bars, but also feed power in from the charger also using these connectors so that in the case that I wanted to take the batteries off the bike, I could actually charge them with the charger 
uh, directly rather than charging the bike as a whole. So that is an option I have as well. Well, here's the bike that I'm going to be cannibalizing for this project. Um, I suppose the first step to do is to take the battery out, take the back wheel off and confirm whether or not the batteries I have are going to fit inside of this bike and the motor I have is going to fit within that swing arm. So that's going to be a stressful uh, experience. drilled out the eyelet, now fits on here. Okay, well, now that we have uh, confirmed that we can fit the hot motor to the frame, it's now time to work out whether or not we can fit these batteries into the same space as this battery. First set of cells, 100 mil by approximately 160 mil by almost exactly 20 mil. So, that would be 150, that's 150. Okay, well, that is uh, a rough assembly of what is going to be one of the batteries, one of the two batteries that powers the motorcycle. So we have three rows of seven plus an extra three up here. They'll all be running in series up through this 80 amp BMS and then out. So you see compared to the uh, original, This is the wrench I'm going to use to put the lugs on. <laughs> Safety first, kids. while there to kind of work out what configuration of what order was going to work so that I could have my B, my B negative be right here. So it zigzags effectively from here to here to here to here to here. I'm going to have to measure the distance between these two lugs here and I'm going to have to fabricate a custom bus bar to uh, connect there and I'm going to need another one for connecting these two here and then another for here and here. Um, so luckily I bought this very heavy duty copper, which I'm going to use to make said bus bar. management system to do its job, it needs to be able to read the individual state of charge of each of the cells in each of the batteries. To do this, you must connect a sensor wire to each of the 24 cells in each of the batteries. This will allow the battery management system to detect if one of the cells is falling out of balance with the rest of the other cells. motor uh, temporarily installed on the swing arm. I've got it connected to the controller here, then I've got um, a throttle cable connected and I've got my positive and negative cables here. 
uh, with a circuit breaker. And now I've just got to install, I think I'm going to run one battery on its own to begin with. And I'll set all the uh, settings with one and then I'll work from there. So each one of these is quite heavy. I just need to connect everything up and all things going right, it shouldn't explode. Good. Nothing exploded. Once again, that's a good sign. So we are calibrating the motor. I quickly realized that the soldering iron I had was definitely not up to the task of soldering the connections on the QS8 connectors. So I went out and bought an 80 watt heavy duty soldering iron, which did a much better job. And we have 79.4 across the terminals. I have wrapped up the entire battery in Capton tape. Just gotta finish off with the bottom edge. And then our battery will be fully enclosed. Right, there's one battery. Battery in hand, let's see if she fits. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no problem. That fits great. Okay, so I have the batteries temporarily fitted in the bike. Um, I have them wired in parallel. Um, I have them wired to the controller, which is wired to the motor. Uh, and I think we're going to give this thing a go, booting it up. This is the first time I'm going to have them in parallel. Hopefully their state of charges are close enough that they don't charge it or you know, dump a lot of current into each other. So one of them is at 79.9, other one's at 79.9. Yep. Oh yeah. Cool, yeah. A maiden voyage of the ride. Everything's very temporary. Uh, I do plan on tidying it all up and making it a lot better. Um, this is just a proof of concept. We have both the batteries wired in parallel, the controller and the motor, and we have the circuit breaker. So I'll flip that now and see what happens. Okay. Running, give her a bit of excuse. Yeah. I've turned it up a little bit. We're now running at about 90 amps. I don't know about the acceleration settings, but just 90 amps battery current. Sadly, moments after recording this, the motor controller completely stopped working. I have no idea what caused it, and I had no way of fixing it. So I was forced to buy a brand new controller. While waiting for the new motor controller to arrive, I started working on the battery enclosures. Initially, I was going to make aluminum housings, but quickly found out there wasn't enough space in the frame. So I ended up just wrapping the batteries in car tire rubber and sealing them with super glue. Okay, so body panels are not on, but it is functioning, so 